Hi, I'm Jackson Crawford. Over the past five years or so, in addition to teaching at several universities, I've been presenting on my subjects of academic expertise, Norse myth, language, runes, etc., on my YouTube channel, supported by my generous community of Patreon donors. And as of 2020, I have actually been doing this full time, reaching out to the public with good information on these popular subjects and no agenda in talking about that information. Now in this video, what I'm going to do is continue my series of detailed stanza by stanza readings of a poem from the Poetic Era. In this case, Horbars Ljoth, the poem in which Odin in disguise and uh, Thor insult one another. It is likely that if you're going to watch a video like this, you have well, it's not likely, it is, it is possible that if you're watching a video like this, you've seen other videos on my channel before. In case you haven't, please note that the pronunciation that I use is not modern Icelandic, and deliberately so. So I'm not making some kind of, you know, long, elaborate mistake uh, while translating Old Norse for you on the spot on screen and, you know, saying Hårbarder instead of Haurbarder. I'm deliberately using the 1200s Old Norse pronunciation. I do know the modern Icelandic pronunciation. I used to teach Icelandic at Berkeley. Please don't harsh me about this. Oh, and one other caveat. I do live in a place where it is extremely windy during certain times of the year, uh, 12 months out of it. And uh, so there's going to be a certain amount of wind noise. I'm in a pretty good sheltered spot right this moment, but you're going to hear some drone of the winds a little bit sometimes, I'm sure. So, Horbars Ljoth. Ljoth means song, and not a common last element in the names of the poems of the Poetic Edda, where we usually find mole speech, uh, sometimes kvida, poem, or in the case of Olusba, spo, poem, uh, prophecy. Uh, so Ljoth is, is song, although there's nothing particularly musical about Horbars Ljoth. Uh, in fact, the meter is extremely irregular, so if anything, it's one of the least musical of the uh, poems in the Poetic Edda. Hard to say how it got this exact name. And the Horbarths, that is the possessive form of Horbarther, the name that Odin takes in this poem. Hor means gray, as in like hoary, right, a hoary old man. Uh, that's the English cognate of this word. Or hoarfrost, gray frost. Um, then Barther is beard. And then you knock off the R when you add the possessive S, so you get Horbars Ljoth, Song of Greybeard. Now, this poem is preserved in both the main manuscript of the Poetic, Poetic Edda, the Codex Regius, or Konungsbok, and also the last part of it uh, is found in the somewhat infamous later manuscript, AM 748 1 quarto which also contains a version of Greenness Mall um, and Four Skierness and also contains, I'm pretty sure I remember a, a version of Hemisquita and it's the only source for Baldistromar. But so in, uh, in an unusual way, Horbus we have uh, actually two manuscript sources for at least the last half of it. For the most part, I am always gonna favor readings that come from Konungsbok or the Codex Regius over those from AM 748 one quarto. That's typically my approach with just about anything. Um, I'm kind of a Codex Regius um, <laughs> purist or whatever. I don't know what you would call that. But I prefer it. I usually find that it has slightly better readings. Although the two versions of Horbus Leoth are not particularly distinct from one another. All right, so we get going with just a short prose preface, which says, Thor for or Östervegi och kom at sundi einu. Oldru megum sunsins var ferru karlin med skipit. Thor kalade. So this says, Thor 
went out of the eastern way and he came to a particular sound or fjord, right, a deep place where water cuts into the land. On the other side of the sound or fjord was a ferryman with a ship and Thor called out. And now he's been in the east, that is understood to mean that he has been out fighting the Jotnar, the enemies of the gods, popularly translated as giants. So what he says stands one, where er sol swains feina, er stender fyr sundit handan. Who is that boy of boys who stands on the other side of the fjord? And the boy of boys thing, this fein swaina, uh, that gets us a nice alliterating line, uh, but it's kind of, you know, prosaically meaningless. Um, Fafnir, the slain dragon, actually says something very similar to uh, Sigurdr, right after Sigurdr gives him his death blow in uh, the poem Faldnismal. Hansvarthi, he answered, so of course this is the ferryman, Who is, or where er so karl karla er kalar um wogin? Who is that man of men who calls across the bay? And then Thor answers, Ferdu mik um sundit, fyrði ek thik o morgun, meis hefi ek o baki, verdra matren betri, ot eki huild, oder ek heiman for, sildr ok havra, sadr em eken thes. Ferry me across the fjord, I will feed you in the morning. And there's several places here in this conversation, pretty, it's pretty conversational in Norse, uh, where the present tense is kind of a future meaning. So, I, I will feed you in the morning, although grammatically it's I feed you in the morning. I have a basket on my back, mace o baki. There is, there, there, there happens to be no better food. Verdra matrim betri. I ate in peace before I left from home. And what he ate was herrings, silder, accused of feminine plural, and goats, havra, I am still uh, satisfied, sather, from this, thes, of this. Uh, by the way, havra, which I'm translating as goats, I think that's the most logical translation of this, havra. After all, Thor is associated with goats. He is called havra drotin, lord of goats, and he travels on a chariot pulled by two goats. Uh, my understanding is some translators take this, however, as oats. Isn't it odd how both of those translations rhyme in English, even though neither one of these words is related to the word for goat or oat in English. Um, but that oat word is really late, and, you know, there's not a particular association of oats with Thor, so I took it as goat, but you may see it as oat elsewhere. All right, so the ferryman is going to reply, stanza four, Or ligum vercum rosarthu verdinum, vetstatu fyrir gorla. Dopr eru thin heimkini, dauð higekat thin modrse. You praise the hrosar early works, or ligum vercum, six of date of object, your breakfast, verdenum. You don't know well forward, veitsta tu gorla furir. And here we're going to see, as so often in these poems, we have the negative suffix a, and then thu, you, is suffixed to the negative suffix, so ah, to, you, don't. Your home knowings, home doings, home business, heimkini, are sad, erudopr. I think, ekhig, that your mother is dead. At thin modir said dau. I say, of course, is subjunctive because it's something he thinks and perhaps doesn't know 100%. Thor's so gonna reply in Sansa 5, that segir thu nu er huerum fukir mestat vita at min modir daudse. You say it now, thu segir that nu, what seems to everyone the biggest to know er thukir huerum mestat vita, so like what would seem like the biggest kind of news that my mother is dead at min modir se daud. Stanza six, the ferryman is going to say to him, Thu ye ersem thu thru bu goth egir ber bein thu stender, ok hevir brautinga gervi, that ki thu havir brucker thinar. Though not is as you, thu ye ersem thu, 
I would of course not translate it that way in English. I'd say something more like, it is not as though you, er, egi, tho, semthu, would perhaps be the uh, best way to break that down in English, remembering that thoigi is a compound of tho, though, and egi, not. So it's not as though you own three good farms, egir, thriu, go, thu. You stand barefoot, barebane, and have a roadman's gear, either brouting gagervi, like you're dressed like a nomad, you look like a vagabond. And then it's also not as though you, thought ki, this is kind of going back to the first two lines, that you have, i.e. own, Javier, your pants, thinar brooker. So, you know, you don't look like a wealthy man, You, which, of course, in this culture, as in many others, uh, can stand for, you know, personal qualities of other kind. You are barefoot, um, you look like a vagabond, you probably don't even own the pants you're wearing. Right? <laughs> like you probably rented those, I guess. Thor says in Sansa 7, Styrthu hin gat ekumi, ek munther stolt na kenna, et a huer o skipit er thu helder vid landit. Steer to hear the, sh the boat, Styrthu hin gat ekumi, I will show you the landing place, ek mun kenna ther stolt na, who owns the ship, where o skip it, which you hold toward land, or through Helder with landed. Notice that Eva and line three often use just as a way to switch from a statement to a question. It's not that 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 it's you know the first half of this is related to the other half. It's just that a speaker is switching from stating something to asking something. And very often um, the word Eva is used as a transitional word there. <sighs> so in eight, the fairy man says back to him, Hildolver saw Hatir er mik aldaba, Rukker in Rod Swini, er bur i Ros oyer sundi, Badat han hleni men flitja er a rosa tjova, Gouda eina, ok tho er ek gerba kuna, seg du til navens thins, if thu vil um sundit fara. That one is named Hildolv, so he did Hildolver, who asked me to hold, and then understood object, the boat, the, the ferry, er mik, er bad halda, mik halda. A wise man, rolls spinni reker. Notice this doesn't have to be a weak adjective here, right? What, why is this the wise man, right? Um, but because of metrical demands, it's going to be uh, that extra syllable. Wise man who lives in Ros Oyer Sund, beauty Ros Oyer Sundi, he asked me not to Han Bad At, and the Mick would be understood there, to move thieves, Lenny men, or horse thieves, Rosa Thiova, only good men understood, Anagoda, and those which I know well, Okto Erekuna Gerva. Tell your name, segdu til thins navens, if you want to go across the fjord, if thu vil fara um sundir. Thor says in nine, segja mun ek til navens means thot ek sekersjok, ok til als uthlis, ek em uthens soner, meila brother, en mag na fader, through the valder goda, Thor knotu her duma. Hints vilek nu spiria, what thu hetir. I will tell my name, ekmun segia til means navens, though I might be guilty, thot ek siok seker, with the ek repeated as a suffix k on sio, which is the first person present subjunctive of uh, to be, so though I might be, right, because he's not. If it were, though I am guilty, it would be thot ek seker ant. And of all my nature, oktil als earthly. So I'll tell you my name and everything about me. I'm Odin's son, Meili's brother, we don't know who Meili is, and Magni's father, chosen for strength through the Baldur among the gods, go the. You know you yourself, understood, to speak with Thor here. Or to deal with Thor here, Knotu Duma Vithor here, 
Now the kno there is cognate with English no, but that is not a common word in Old Norse, which typically uses vita for no. The kno verb can be used pretty often in poetry just as a filler. It kind of is here, right? He's saying you you deal you're dealing with Thor here. But if you want to take it literally, it also makes sense. You know you're dealing with Thor here now, right? Because now I've admitted I'm Odin's son and Magni's father and whoever Meili is, his brother. Now I will ask, nu vil expiria, the other one, hence, what you are called, what thou hates here. And the ferryman says in 10, Hor barder ek heti hulk um naven sjaldan. I am named Hor barder, graybeard, hoary beard. I seldom conceal my name, which is the biggest lie Odin ever tells anywhere, because he has 80 names. Um, notice again, the uh, subject ek suffix to the verb hil uh, conceal there. Oh, a uh, hairy woodpecker. By the way, that hil uh, verb uh, to conceal Related to a lot of verbs you might not expect. Of course, hole is from that, right? You would conceal something in a hole. Um, or to a uh, helmet, which conceals your head. Or to, um, I mean, it's actually from the same root as, as conceal in Latin, but you've got Grimm's Law, where you've got the C in Latin and H in Germanic languages. And then it's also related to hell, the place where you're concealed, right? You're buried in the underworld. All right. Thor says in 11, What skaltu of naven hulia nemathu sakar egir? So in poetry, often what means any other question word, right? It can mean where, when, why, how. So here we can take it as why. Why shall you conceal a name, hulia naven, unless nema you had uh, crimes, right? Like unless you were guilty of something, nemathu egir sakar. And then Horbrother replies in 12, And thot ek sakar ega, tho mun ek forda fjorvi minu, fyr slikum sem thu ert, nema ek fegersio. But though I have crimes, or, and this is subjunctive, so he's kind of denying it, so like, even if I had crimes, then I would protect my life, tho ek mun forda mina fjorvi, from such a one, Sleekum as you are. Simthu eret. Unless I be doomed to die. Nema ek sjo theger. A lot of subjunctive there. Thor in 13. Harm ljotan mer thukir i thvi at vada um vogin til thin ak vata ogr min. Skilde ek leuna kogur sveni thinum kangen urdi evek komum k ivir sundi. Now there's a couple of hop hocks here. Uh, hop hocks are gomena, meaning word attested only once. So it would seem to me, thicker mare, in this, it be a great sorrow, an ugly sorrow, liotan harm, to wade across the the bay to you, at vada umvogen tofin, and get my auger, I'll come back to this, wet. Look, that's a mean auger. I would pay you back you low boy, probably, Thenum, uh, Kogger Sveni. Um, just kind of an abusive term for like a servant or something. Um, your mocking words, Kongen Irdi. At least we think that's what it means. Irdi is a dismissive way of saying words. Uh, it's the diminutive of words. And Kongen, we have no idea. But, you know, clearly by context, it's like your, your nasty words, your mocking words. If I came myself, brought myself, komunk, over the sound or fjord. So what is he going to get wet in line three? There's a million ideas about what this means. It's another hot box. Um, people have taken it sometimes in a kind of blue way, but I think the simple syntax explanation is that it's his pants. Horbarther in 14 says, Her mun ek standa ok thin hedan bida. Fantatu man in harra at hungni daudon. I will stand here, ek mun standa here, and w w <laughs> and wait for you from here. Ok be the thin hevan. Be the wait for takes a genitive object. You wait for someone in the genitive. 
you did not find a harder man, Fantathu Hardra Man. Again, it's kind of uselessly uh, a weak adjective here, but we're getting another syllable uh, out of the N. After dead Hrungnir, at Daudan Hrungnir. Now, this is a pretty rare survival into the language of the Eddas of the uh, the 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 aft preposition that we see in runic inscriptions that takes an accusative object so you raise a, uh, a stone aft someone in the accusative that's almost certainly what this at is because we've got an accusative object here right it's daldon not daulum um so with from near dead you're not going to find you never found a harder man than than me the reply is 15. Hence will tu nu geta er bit hrungnir deldum, so in stor usgi jotun er or steni var hovedet o. Tho let ek han falla, ok vire hniga, hvat vantu tho me van hor barder. You want to mention that thu vil geta nu hence? When we two I and Hrungnir, Vit Hrungnir, uh, dealt with one another, Deldum. Notice that uh, Vit, which means we too, uh, whatever it's followed by, it basically means that person and I, right? Vit Hrungnir, we too, Hrungnir means Hrungnir and I. So when Hrungnir and I had dealings, Deldum. That big <laughs> Jotun, so in Stor Uthgi Jotun, it could also, you know, this Uthgi, Uthgir, suffix on adjectives can often be used again just to pad out a syllable um if you take it literally it is from hug mine uh so we could see it as like that big minded yotun right uh and mine can often mean actually courage so like maybe the courageous yotun hard to say exactly how to take that but he's big or he's courageous or something that yotun who the head on er hover the uh, was made of stone, var or steini. Though I let him fall, tho ek let han falla, and kneel before, and then me is understood, hniga fitter. What did you do meanwhile then, Harbarther? And then that is going to get repeated by each of them now as they start boasting about the different stuff they were doing. What were you doing meanwhile? Hot vantu tho medan. Harbarther replies, varakmet fjolvari, fim Vetter alla i oi theri er aldrun hetir. Vega ver thor knotum och val fella, marks at freista, mans at costa. I was with Fjolvar, ekvarmeth Fjolvari, whoever that is, all five winters a la fim vetter on that island i theri oi, which is named al green er hetir algrun. We knew to fight there, fair knotum vegathar, and to drop corpses on the battlefield, ok fella val. Val, of course, being part of the words like valhol and valkyrie, means corpse on the battlefield. And here again, we see Knoll used basically as filler, right? He could just say, we fought there, you know, wogum there, and we felled bodies, fellum val. But he wants these other syllables. The poet wants these other syllables. Um, and further, to try much, face to marks, and to kiss a girl, Costa Mans. Remember, man with two ends means man, person, man with one end means girl. 17, Thor asks, Where su snoothu uther konr idrar? How did your women, like, go with you, <laughs> snoothu uther? Or rather, replies, and there's a lot here that's hard to understand. In 18, Sparkar o tu ver konur ev os at spokum irthi. Horskar o tum ver konur ev os holar veri. Dar or sandi sima undu ok or dali dupum grund um grovu. Vardek theim ein olum evri at rodum. Huilda ek hio theim sistrum siao. Och havde ek ged theira alt och gaman. Hvat vanta vantu tho medan thor. We had lively women, sparkar corner. If, and then this is oddly phrased, 
if to us us at wiseness at wisdom uh it happened ear thee so like if they happen to be wise with us perhaps if they treated us wisely might be the way to take that best they wound their undu cords sima which in modern Icelandic means telephones out of the sand or sandi and out of a deep valley ok or dupum dali they dug ground grovu grun i became ikvar the lone ain higher in councils every at roll them among them all same olum Presumably meaning like I became highest in estimation among them all. They liked me best. I was their favorite. All their favorite. And I had ok ek havda all their mind alt theragev ok gaman and joy. I had all their mind and joy. And that particular phrase having all of a woman's mind and joy Odin you could say is kind of fond of this because that's what he says uh, he wants from uh, I think it's Billingsmoy and, and all of them all. He wants all her mind, like presumably meaning she's very willing, right? Um, and and her joy, and I think you can read between the lines what kind of joy he's talking about. And what were you doing meanwhile, Thor? Thor says in 19, <laughs> Thor's so much more businesslike. <laughs> Odin just says, you know, I was sleeping with women. Ektrap fjatsa in thruth mothga jotun, up ek varp augum alvalda sonar, o than in heida himen. Thou eru merki mest, mina verka, thou er allir men sidan um se. What vantu medan, hor bardu? I killed Tiazzi. The strong Jotun, or strong, mooded, Mothga is used just like Uthga. It's just, it's one of these suffixes you can just get more syllables out of an adjective with. I threw up the eyes, ek varp augum up, and threw up, it's like he's actually throwing up, he's not vomiting of uh, the son of Alvaldi, Sonar Alvaldi, into the bright heaven, Othan and He the Himen. Notice doubling up on our specifiers there, Than, that, in the, it's pretty common in poetry though to get syllables. Those are the greatest marks thou eru mest merki of my works, mina verka. Those which all men may see, thou er alir men se, later, see thou. What were you doing meanwhile? Poor brother. Who says in 20, Miklar man velar ek havda vid mukrider, tho er ek velta ther fro verum. Hardan jotun ek hug the hlebard thera, gav han mer gambantein, en ek velta han or viti. So, what were you doing meanwhile, poor brother? And he replies, Great trickings of girls <laughs> miklar man vel i remember man the one in is girl vel is like english while it's trick deception so great trickings of girls i had with uh darkness writers merc writers which is which when i thought er ek uh, deceived them away from their husbands though er ek velta thea fro verum i think Hlebard was a hard Jotun, ek hugda chlebar vera hardan Jotun. He gave me a magic wand, gamban tain, and I tricked him out of his wits, veltahan or viti. Thor says in 21, Illum hugia launa dir thu tho godar gyabar. With an ill mind, a bad mind, bad heart, perhaps in our, our idiom. Illum hugia, you repaid him through launa dir then good gifts go there gyavar or by there in 22 and this is quite a statement of odin uh philosophy that heavier ache er of anari skever um sicker where is sleeku what vantu metanthor an oak owns that it have thought which it shoves from another er skever of anari so we can picture two forests two trees in a forest and one you know, growing in such a way that it pushes another one out of the way. For himself is each one in such. So each man where is for himself er um sick in such. Isliku. Right, it's every man for himself. What were you doing meanwhile, Thor? Who says 23? 
Ik was ouder, ook jot na bardak, broeder bolvisar er til bjarks gengu. Mikil mundi et jot na ev allir livdi, vetter mundi manna undir midgardi. Wat vantu medan? Horvarder. I was east in the east, and I fought Jotnar, or beat Jotnar, Barda from Beria. Bale wise, so like evil brides, i.e., Jotun women, who went to a mountain, Gangutilpjargs. The family of Jotnar at Jotnar would, Mindy and then Vera is understood, be big, Mikkel, if all lived. Not a man, vetter manna, mindi, would, and then we'd be understood again. Under, here under can be better understood as, as, as within, perhaps under the protection of Midgarder. So if all the Jotnar that I hadn't killed lived, there wouldn't be any men, quote unquote, under or perhaps within Midgarder. Remember that Midgarder is technically not so much the realm we live in as the Garther, the fence that's around it. And then he says, what were you doing me well, Horbrother? All right, so Horbrother says in 24, Varrek o valandi ok vigum filgdak atta ek jovrum en aldri sattak. Odin o jarla tha er i valfalla en thor o thralla kyn. I was in Valland. Now, you could take this to be literally, uh, you know, France or something. Uh, sometimes it's used that way in Old Norse. Val, it's not, it's not corpse land, although maybe it could be meant that way here. Um, but it, as a regular place name, actually Val is from an old root that means uh, foreign. It's actually the same root that's in English. Welsh, right? The Welsh are kind of the prototypical foreigners to the early English, just as the French are for some reason to the early Norse. So I was in Valon, maybe corpse land, or just meant to be some foreign place. It's certainly not, you know, specifically France. And I followed battles. Filgdak Vigum. I, uh, like, incited, right? Etya. It's kind of like eat at. It's, it's like whet the temper of, incite to violence. So I incited violence in uh, princes, Yovrum, but I never settled them in Alde Sethak. So I always encourage princes to fight. I never encourage them to, to make peace. Odin owns the Jarls who fall in the corpses on the battlefield. Odin o Jarla Thor eri Valfala. But Thor owns the kins of slaves, the people of slave kin, Thor o Thralakin. Now, this <laughs> set of three lines has inspired some speculation that there is some kind of special afterlife that Thor runs. This is the only reference to such. Otherwise, we don't hear of anyone after death joining Thor. So it might not be that Odin here is necessarily making some kind of, you know, mythic remark, but rather that he's just insulting Thor, right? After all, we hear that Odin chooses half of the men who die in battle in Grimnus Mall, and that presumably Freya as chief of the Valkyries, uh, chooses the other half. And I, I do think that's what Freya is doing. I don't think she's taking them to somewhere separate. That's a whole other issue I've talked about in another video. Um, so maybe he's kind of saying, like, you know, after I choose my half, the best half, um, you can have, you know, the, the, the slave ones. Right, I'm going to take the noble guys. Thor says, and this is a weird stanza, 25, O Yavant Skifta erthu mundir med awesome lithi if thou atir vilgi mikils bald. Okay, so uneven o yavan deal skifta when you would thou mindir and then skifta we could maybe take as the infinitive that goes with mindir. So ir, when you would deal out unevenly with the gods, an army. Like, this is just syntactically kind of weird. We can, you know, extrapolate that there's obviously some damage to this text. Uh, there's several places where you have hotbox words that might be miscopied, you know, more common words that we can't see through now. Um, 
you know, these two, th these these first two lines here are really difficult to to understand. But presumably, it looks like what Thor is trying to say is something like, "You deal out unevenly, right, through Skitta Oyavan among an army, mid Livy, right? Like you, you don't deal out justly or fairly among armies." And then the last line goes with that pretty well. If through Atir Vilgi Mikkels Falls, so if you own much power of such a great one, Mikkels Vilgi is much bald power of such a great one, Mikkels. So if you have that kind of power, like presumably over battles, you judge unevenly. At any rate, it's a complaint that would be quite in keeping with Odin's character. Horbath says in 26, still hammering at Thor, Thor or Abel Urit, and Eki Hjarta, of Ratslu och Hug Blöði, Thor var i Hanska Trovit, och Thotisk A, Thu Thor Thorvera. Horki Thu Thor Thordir, Thur Ratslu Thinni, Hnjosa ne Fisa, Svo at Fjallar Hörði. Thor has enough physical strength, Urit Abel, but no heart in Eki Hjarta, right? Like courage. From fear, Hretzlu, and mind moistness, who could play thee, so, you know, cowardice. Uh, you were trodden, you were stepped on in a glove. There var trodet i Hanska. And when we pacifize verbs in Old Norse, the logical object is still in the case that it would be supposed to be as the object of that verb. Um, if it's dative or genitive, so that's why it's dative here, because you tread on something in the, in the, um, in the dative. And you did not seem to be Thor then, Oxotisk a thu vera Thor Thor. You did not dare then, thu Thor thir horki Thor. And horki is normally on, like, neither in prose, but in poetry it can simply be a nice two-syllable word that alliterates with ages. Um, that means not or didn't. So you didn't dare then for your fear, like your fear's sake, the Nihratzu, to sneeze, nyosa, nor fart, fisa, so that Fjallar heard, and then, you know, you, thick, is understood there. Now, the reference to him being stepped on in a glove is, of course, a reference to the story that we know from, only in detail from Snorri's Prosetta, where uh, Thor and Loki encounter Utgard the Loki in the disguise of Skrimir. Notice uh, Loki makes fun of him for the exact same thing in Lokasena. And uh, so the story was probably pretty well known. The name Fjallar, however, is not associated with Utgard the Loki or Skrimir in that story. So it's possible some version of the story ran around with different names that we're familiar with now. And that Fjallar name shows up in all kinds of weird places. It shows up in Hogmall too in a, in a weird sort of contextless place. 27 Thor says, Horvarther in Ragi, ek munda thiki heldrapa, evek matha selas cum sund. Horbar the sissy, right? This is rager, arger, the abuse word um, that stands for all kinds of bad things, right? You know, any unmasculine attribute you can attribute to someone comes with this word, right? Cowardly weak, etc. I would strike you into hell, kill you into hell, ek munda. Drepathiki hill, if I might reach myself out, Selask, across the fjord um sund. Or barther in 28, what skilder thu um sund Selask er sakeru als ungar? What vantu thaw thor? Why, again, what can stand for pretty much any question word in poetry, why should you reach yourself out across the fjord when the causes sakir? are nothing at all, ungar, als, right? Like now Odin's trying to be cool after he's, you know, he's, he's the raven that's pecked at the eagle uh, several times and now he's trying to, to act like he hasn't. What did you do then, Thor? Thor says, 29, Ekvar euster ok o navarrak, Thor er mik sotu ther svorang sunir, grjoti ther mik bordu, Gagni urdu ther tho lit fegnir, tho urdu ther mik fyri fridar at bidja. 
Wat van tu thol, Melan, Horbarde. I was eastward and I defended the river, Vardak Ana. When Swarong's sons sought me, so to make, attacked me, they struck me with stone, their bordu mikrioti, but they became their urdu little happy, lit fegnir with the, the gain, Gagni. So, like, it didn't get them much. They didn't become very happy with the results of that. Though they became, though their urdu, sooner fury to ask at bidya me make for peace, Fridar. So, and, and, and that, that become, Fertha, that verb can kind of mean like they had to. So, before long, fury, they had to, their Urdu, ask me, Bidya Mik, for peace, Fridar. What were you doing? Harbarther, who says in 30, Ekvar Euster, Okvid ein huerea dimdak, lekeg vid in a lean huitu ok laun thing hodak, gladak in a gul biortu gamni mar undi. I was eastward, and I dealt with a certain someone, dimzak vid ein huerea, and that is feminine accusative, so a certain lady someone. I played with that linen bright eklek vid in a lean huitu. And women sort of stereotypically uh, wear uh, linen, so he's playing with, you know, she's and, and they're very bright when they're beautiful, so she's very beautiful and she's dressed in like fine clothes. And I performed hothak, this is from the verb hoya, past tense hotha. I performed a secret meeting, <laughs> lounge thing, I think we can guess what kind. I gladdened the gold, the gold bright, the gold, I gladdened the gold bright girl in a gold piartu, and the girl granted me joy, mer undi gamni. Now, that's halfway through the stanzas here, although actually the later stanzas tend to be shorter. Notice, you know, this is really, really uneven in terms of stanza length. There's something weird about the way this poem's been preserved, because a lot of the first half of the stanzas are really, really long. A lot of the second half stanzas are really, really short. And then you have mixed in, you know, long ones and mid-short ones. Um, the meter's really irregular. There's something weird away about the way this poem is preserved. So when I don't fully gather what a stanza says, and by the way, that doesn't mean anybody else does. It means everybody disagrees about what it says. Um, I, I don't feel so bad with Harper's Oath as I might feel with Hall them all, because clearly this is preserved sort of badly. All right, let me give you a quick word from my sponsor and catch my breath a little. I guess it is sort of ever so slightly snowing now. All right. <clears throat> 31. Thor says, Go with Otu, there man kuni Y'all, there had good women knowings there then. Man kuni Hopper this says in 32, Lids thins vera ek thor thurvi thor, at ek hilda theri in the lin huitu moi. I, uh, I would need then your help. And I don't know what the vera is doing here. It seems like it would have to be, I would ek vera, like in need, thurvi, of your help, Thien's Liz, yeah, then Thor, that I would hold, at ek Hilda, that the uh, linen bright girl. So, you know, obviously these poems come from a different time than our own, and uh, here he is saying, apparently, uh, I could have used your help and holding the girl down. To which Thor replies in 33, ek minda ther thothat veta. I would give you that then, 
Minda thoughtful to you there. If I could come, subjunctive so past, come uh, to the place, thither, if I could come there at. Or brother, 34. Ik munda thir fo trua nema thu mik i trigd veltir. I would trust you then, trua thir tho, except nema thu veltir, you deceived, right, tricked me in trust i trig. So you deceived me after we had some trust, some understanding. Thor and 35, M cat exo hell beater sem hood score for an war. I am not a heel biter, M cat, so we got M M with suffixed K from ek and then at the negative, so I am not M cat a heel biter like an ancient leather shoe sem for an hood score in the springtime, o war. And Horbrother just says, then, you know, what were you doing? Meanwhile, Thor says, 37, Brudir berserkia bardaki hlesoyu, thar hov du verst unit, velta thiod ala. I fought bardak, brides of berserkers, Brudir berserkia, uh, playing live in Denver Friday night. Uh, I fought the brides of berserkers in hlesoy, uh, probably Danish lasso. They had done the worst there, who the unit first. And then we have Theodal is all the people. Velta wouldn't be the right verb form for them to be acting, although they're the ones we would expect to be acting. Right, we would think it'd be Veltu for third person plural, past, like they deceived. All the people, or maybe this is a participle, you know, a whole deceived people, but then that doesn't make sense. Why is it accused of singular? Again, this poem is reserved weird. Horbarther, 38. Klaki vantu thol thor, irthu okonum barther. You did vantu thor then uh, shameful deeds, klaki, when you fought or struck at women, when you hit women, irthu barther okonum. <laughs> Not that Odin has a lot of place to talk about chivalric treatment of women. Uh, 39, Thor says, Vargen your voru thar and varla komer, skeldu skip mit erik skordat havdak, uktu meriorn lurki and eltu thjolva, hvat vantu medan horbarder. They were thar voru, uh, bad wolf women. So, varker is, of course, the evil bad word for a wolf. You know, a man might be named Ulver, but he'll never be named Varger, which, you know, it's, it's the criminal, the evil word. Okay, but then we have it as a feminine by adding inya. So these are like, you know, it's like bad wolf women opening for Brides of Berserkers in Denver this Friday. All right, so they were actually bad wolf women. Um, and Varla Corner had hardly women. They, like, slammed my ship, Skeldu Mitskip. Uh, Skela. It's kind of a sense of striking repeatedly. Um, I kind of like it because it's actually the, uh, it, it gives rise to modern Swedish uh, huela, which means to scold, right? Like you're kind of hitting repeatedly on someone that you just keep scolding. So they, they kind of slam my ship, uh, which I had propped up, Erek Havdak Skordat. They threatened me, Ugdumer, with an iron thing, Jorn Lurki, and they drove off Thjolvi, Eltu Thjolva. Thjolvi, of course, is Thor's boy slave. And what were you doing meanwhile? Horbarther, who says in 40, Ekvark i hernum, erhingat gerdisk, genava gunfana gerat rioda. I was in the army, which happened this way, gerdisk hingat, to, like, project, to put forward a uh, war banner, gunfani, and to redden a spear, rioda. Here. Now, happening this way, apparently, you know, Thor is taking this as meaning this way toward uh, Oscar there somehow, because he then says, 41, Thes viltu nu geta ertu fort os o juvan at bioda. So you want to mention it now, thu vil geta thes nu. And remember, when you mention something, you mention in the, in the with geta, you mention in the genitive. 
when you came to us, er through fort us, to offer a pure the o liuvan, like un, un peace. It's like you, you came to, to offer, you know, some kind of war to the gods. And if we remember from the very beginning, Thor had been coming from the east, so he's presumably coming home to Oscar there, so that's why he's understanding this is coming to here to the gods. However, this says in 42, I was understood here, I shall offer in repayment scalpita to you there for it that then a armoring mundabaugi which judges Yavnender appraised. So I thought was an equal value, a good value for this compensation I'm offering you, they who want to settle us, their er filia satha walker. The exhausted Thor in 43 says, Huar namtu thessi in hnivilegu orth, erik hyrtha aldregi hnivilegri. Where did you learn, Huar namtu, these, the, the caustic words in hnivilegu orth, which I never heard, erik aldregi hyrtha, Costiger, <laughs> right? More cutting. Moreover, this says in 44, Nam ek at monum theim inum aldrenum er bua ihemis skogum. I learned them from the ancient men, theim inum aldrenum monum, who dwell in the forest er bua i skogum. Hamus. Now, it's weird that this is written Hamus, but, you know, the homes. Or, or, or realms would be Hames. Hamir is a name, so it could be the Forest of Hamir, but who is Hamir in this case? Or the Forest of Home. And then it's even weirder how Thor takes this. As in 45, he says, Tho gevrthu got navendisium erthu kalarthat hames skoga. Though you give, though thu gever, a good name to burial mounds, disium, when you call it the Forest of Home force of Hamir. You know, what's going on here? I, it's, again, it's poem is reserved for you. 46, however, this says, Wo du mi ek um far. So I talk about such a matter, sikt far. Thor says in 47, Orth kringi thin mun ther illa koma evek rad o vog at vada ulvi hera hik ek at thu upa munir ev thu hitter av hamri hog so your wordplay, the orth kringi, to you will bring bad things. Mun ther coma illa. Coma can have a transit meaning of bring. If I manage evek rad to wade on the bay, so presumably like across the bay at vada or vog, I think ek hig that you at thu would. Scream, Uppa, higher than a wolf, Hera Ulvi, if you were allotted, if you received, if you litter, a blow hog from a hammer of Hamri. Or Barthes says, 48, Siv o ho hema, Hans mundu fund vilia, than muntu threk drigia, that erther skildara. So here he uses one of Loki's favorite words uh, and refers to Siv, Thor's wife and says Siv has a whore man, right? Some kind of adulterous uh, man, an adulterous partner at home. And you will want Thumund Vildia, his meeting, Hans Foon. So when you have someone's meeting, you meet them. So it's like, you'll want to meet him, not me, not, not this guy, the guy who's taunting you. You want to meet the guy who's sleeping with your wife to hit with your hammer. You will commit thu mont dregia, that test of strength, than threk, that is thought air, it's like shudder, that is more obligatory, skildera, to you there. Thor in 49, malir thu at muns rovi, swa at mer skuldi verst thikja, haller in hugblaudi, hig ek at thu liugir. You speak thu malir at your mouth's council at Munz Rovi. So just whatever occurs to your mouth. 
right? Not obviously not what occurred to your mind. So that to me, Swat Mir should seem the worst. Gulli the Kiver. So you just speak whatever comes to your mouth, whatever will seem worse to me. The mind or courage moist man, Hug Blevi Haller, I think that you lie. Ek Hug at du Lugir. Or brother says in 50, Sat Hug ek mik sege, sein er tu at for thini. Langt minder thu nu komen thor, ev thu litum thurir. I think, ek hig, me to say truth, mik segisat. So I think that I speak truth. You are late at your journey, thu er sein at thini for. You would, thu mundir, and then vera, be will be understood here, you would be long come, longt komen, so you will have arrived late. That's probably how we should read that now, Thor. If you bring Furrier, presumably bring yourself in the colors, i.e. when the colors change from day to night. So you'll be late even if you travel through the night. It seems like an increasingly frustrated Thor says in 51, Horbarther in Ragi, Helder Hevir Thu no Mikdvaldan. Harbarth the Sissy, <laughs> rather, Helder, you, Thu, have delayed me now, Thvald on McNoom. Horbarth says in 52, O Sathors hug the ek aldregi mundu glepia fe hirdi farar. In prose word order, ek I never aldregi thought hug the a herder fe hirdi would mundu confound, confuse, you know, interrupt glepia. Thor of the Asir also Thor's journeys far are. So I didn't think just some herder, you know, some low class guy could could confound your purpose, Thor. Thor in fifty three Rold Mun Ekthernu Rolda Ro thu hingat botinum hatum hittingi hitu Thor Magna. I will advise you now advice. Ek Moon Rolda Thernu Roth. Ro English row, row to here the boat, row the boat here. We'll stop the threatening. Hatsum Hutingi. You meet, you'll meet the father of Magni. Harbar the 54. Fardu fir sundi, ter skalfarsinia. Go far away from the fjord, fir sundi. To you, there, shall deny sinia a journey or a carrying far. So. It is denied to you to cross the fjord. I'm not going to fear you across. Thor 55. Visa thu mer nu ledena, als thu vil mik egi um vogen feria. Show me now the path, visa ledena, mer, as you want, als thu vil not egi ferry across the bay um vogen. Horbarther in 56 says, Litet erat sinja, langt erat fara, stund er til stoksens, onir til steinsens, haltus vol til vinstra vexens, uns thu hittir verland, dar mun fjörgun hitta thor son sin, og mun hon kenna honum otunga brautir til odins landa. It is a little thing to deny you, litet erat sinja. It's a long way to go, langt erat fara. A while is to the tree trunk stalk. Another while, right, so you're going to have to go a long way to the tree trunk, another to the stone, Stainsons. Hold then, haltu swo to the left road, Venstra Vexens, until you hit Manland, <laughs> hit your Verlon, so probably inside of Mathegar, the human's realm. There, Fjorgen, another name for Yorth, Odin's, I mean, excuse me, Thor's mother. Fjorgen will meet Thor, her son, Munhita Thor, since son, and she will Okon Mun show him Kanahonum his family's roads, Otunga Brautir, to Odin's lands, to Odin's landa. Thor fifty-seven, Munaktakatangati Dag, will I get there today? Harbartha says fifty-eight, Taka with Vil Ok Ervidi at Up Verandi Solu er Eket Thona. And then, so we can understand, he's responding to what Thor asked, 
right? Mun ek taka. So he says taka, but we can understand the thu mun. You will take with, you will receive, feel everything, misery and difficulty at or while the sun is up, at upveron di solu, so at the up being of the sun, so while the sun is up, when I guess it thaws, at it get thona, which of course, if he's traveling in uh, something like the spring, especially the thawing time would be exactly when you don't want to travel. It's definitely true in Colorado too. <laughs> definitely in Wyoming on the midnight roads. Thor says 59, skamt munnu mol okatvera, alstu mer skutingu emi sparar. Launa mun ek ther farsinun evit finumk isin anat. Now, nu, our speech, okat mol, will be short, mun vera skamt, as you answer me, alstu svarar mer, with taunting alone, skutingu eni. I will repay you, ek mun launa ther, for the fairy denial, farsinun. If we find one another, if fit finumk, reciprocal, another occasion, isin anat. And then Horbarla concludes the poem by saying, Fardunu darsthik havi alan gramir. Go now where the, like, it's you know, evil spirits, bad things, have you completely, havi thick alan just a curse, right? Not that there's necessarily any evil spirits that Thor really needs to fear. Well, <sighs> sitting here up on the mountain with higher mountains behind me, I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, don't know how much room some of the text will take up, but I hope you've gotten to see some of the cool interplay of light uh, over there. I am wishing you, as customary, from beautiful Colorado, all the best. Well, sitting here with all the nut hatches honking and up in the mountains with some weird transition from hot and sunny to surprisingly gray. I hope, uh, I don't know how much text has taken up space on the screen here, but I hope you've been able to enjoy some of the interplay of the light on the high mountains back there. I am, as customary, from beautiful Colorado, wishing you all the best. <laughs>